Hey, so I am just sitting here thinking of how to articulate all the thoughts I have on these topics that we're about to discuss. I would love to have an open conversation with anyone open-minded or just someone who has anything to share, okay, after the video. So be prepared to leave some comments. I am very interested in what you have to say okay again open-minded people people who you know are into this type of stuff so it's venus retrograde in leo and venus is a planet of beauty of love i would even say lust um just venusian energies okay so during this time a lot of us are going to find ourselves sort of redefining what love means to each of us individually. So clearly we all have our own individual experiences with the topic, okay? That word alone carries so much power that it can very much change the course of things between people. If someone says, I love you too soon, if someone doesn't say I love you soon enough, if someone didn't feel loved growing up, if someone, you know, says they love something but they don't behave accordingly, there's so many ways to depict like what love is. So I'm gonna do my best to just sort of put out what is coming through, at least for me, and I'm sure some of you as well. Okay, so. First things first, I had this message earlier than I posted on Facebook and Instagram, and I want to backtrack on it just a little bit because I feel like I conveyed that love should be conditional. Other than, you know, parents of children and, you know, pet owners and things, and I really truly didn't mean to give the message that love should be conditional, but that adult relationships, be it romantic or otherwise, should be conditional. And I still stand on that, but you can love someone unconditionally and still not grant access to you, to your energy. And it's actually very poor auric hygiene to do so and so i do stand by that but you know if anyone read that and thought oh love's conditional with this girl or like she's a mega bitch like <laughs> let me just clarify i don't think love should be conditional so that's out of the way but it's it's really been on my mind because well obviously <laughs> because of the the transit but i do feel like there are certain ideas that are being perpetuated and being fed into that truly do not serve us as individuals or as a community or you know uh, as big as you want to take the picture um we only have true control over ourselves okay we can't buy love okay but there's multiple examples of like the thought that you can right and, you know sugar daddy shit or um i mean there's plenty of examples that's just one that came to mind but you can't genuinely buy love you can't force love you can't extract it where it is not so the one core belief that i have and i feel like a lot of us have is that we're all an extension of love okay so and i'm not religious per se but i am going to touch on christianity a little bit and even that word okay christianity Jesus, God, those are trigger words, just like love is for people. So if you're still with me, 
let's talk about this. So I do believe that we're all extensions of a source. Okay, if you want to call source God or whatever, it's just a name. I don't care what you want to call it. Let's call it source. For example, purposes. I truly believe that, you know, us natural people, I'm not talking about like the, you know, the reptiles. I truly believe that we're all extensions of that. And in our human experience, we have free will, okay? We have ego, and the ego separates us. And I'll do a separate video on ego because the ego is not evil. It's the only thing about the ego is it cuts us off at times from that which we truly are love and that's where we find suffering okay and so there's some things i want to bring up okay the first thing i want to talk about is unconditional love and in my post i mentioned that unconditional love is something you have for like children and animals in yourself or god or source whatever but truly yes you can extend unconditional love to anyone anything all things but that unconditional love that you have for yourself it helps you to see yourself in a light in which you can forgive yourself for your past mistakes one part of being human is we're all going to make mistakes, okay? And to which degree, it really doesn't matter. But you need a way to reconcile with yourself and feel whole and complete. And so the unconditional love, first and foremost, I do believe belongs to you, okay? And you heard a million times, you can't love someone else if you don't love yourself, but truly there's a lot of people that don't find love within themselves or they bypass that and find it or what they think that is in others and so let's go over some definitions so by definition love is an intense feeling of deep affection or a great interest and pleasure of something Okay, very different from lust. Okay, lust is sometimes a sexual basis, but um, we can lust for power. We can lust for things, but lust is rooted in emptiness. And that's very much the opposite of love, right? And we also know that energetically, love is one of the highest frequencies available to us in this world. So to really feel that wholeness and that completeness, it, we're never truly gonna find it outside of ourselves, okay? Finding it outside of ourselves is just, it's shaky, it's brittle, and it's, it's false. And so to have love for self and, you know, nurture that is like step one. And I feel like a lot of people, and let's just take a moment and express gratitude that we actually have, most of us actually have the privilege of, you know, choosing to love ourselves. And most of us are not married off or sold off to a family because not every place in the world is, has that. Okay. So I, I do <laughs> want to express our privilege of um, and yes, it, it, I do believe it's a birthright, but let's be very honest, you know, there's places in the world that just don't have what we have and we do need to be grateful for that. So we've defined love, we've defined lust. I want to jump to a little bit of Christianity because where I do not consider myself a Christian, I have experienced Christ consciousness and I I do believe that Jesus is an entity of extreme love and extreme, you know, it's just something you have to experience. Again, I don't go to church. I am very like, like, this is my church. Okay. Like my vessel, I 
it's, it's not all about me. So let's just move on. So when we look at the story, just for example purposes, let's look at the story of Jesus and how he sacrificed basically himself. Um, I don't think that he had much of a choice, you know, regardless if it really happened or if it's a story, that's not the point. The idea is that it's a sacrificial love, okay? He he died for us or things like that. So let's apply that to today and and how how is that practical? I see a lot of people expressing sacrificial love, okay? Putting others before them and I can say, you know, as a mother, that I know I'm aligned with love when I put my children before me because that doesn't make me resentful. And that's a major key. I don't feel resentful for having children and putting their needs above mine at times, right? Because I know that I can always make time for myself at, you know, a later date. And they're not going to be little forever. And... So there is no resentment in that capacity. But when it comes to adults, okay, I see people fixing themselves, changing themselves in ways that they don't necessarily want to for love. Okay, people will sacrifice. Okay, and let's look at the definition of sacrifice. I wrote it down. You know what sparked this? Let me back up. Stefan Speaks, Stephen Speaks, Stefan Speaks. Um, he has a YouTube channel, he has a Facebook page, and I followed him like 10 years ago, and his posts still come up on my Facebook feed. And so I was having all these thoughts, and then, you know, here comes his post, and his post was, Lust can feel like love until it's time to make a sacrifice. And I started commenting and I'm like, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot. And you know how Facebook is. I'm not a big fan of Facebook, but I just, I kind of deleted my, uh, I backspaced my whole comment because it just, it just, you know, I didn't care to say anything on that forum, you know, on that platform. And, but what, what I was about to say about this was, you know, sacrifice sounds a lot like a future resentment, you know, sacrifice by definition. I mean, we're not talking about like, like sacrifice, like in the biblical sense, but sacrifice as in give up something you value to gain something more important. And it really just contributes in my mind. And you know, look, give me your opinion. Because I, I I rarely ask for opinions. So give me your opinion in the comments. But it really just sounds like you're setting yourself up for a future resentment. And it also it sounds a little bit lack-based. As in, well, I can't have it all. Little old me, I can't have it all. I can't have everything I want which a lot of our parents told us that. That's a program, and I don't believe it. Um, you know, we live in a world of paradox, but again, we'll save that for another day. But it really perpetuates this lack-based thinking where you have to sacrifice for love. And I just, it, something like that just does not sit right with me. Because when you're in love, if you give something up, because you're truly in love, it's not gonna feel like a sacrifice. It's gonna feel like the next logical thing. It's not gonna feel like a sacrifice. And also that word sacrifice, it, it's like a cousin to the word compromise. And Eartha Kitt, okay, totally changed my mind like years ago, not recently changed my mind about the word compromise you know the famous video if you don't know what i'm talking about just look up eartha kit compromise and again the definition of compromise let's let's talk about that 
to accept standards that are lower than desirable. Desirable. Accepting standards that are lower than desirable. Also, it means to undermine or weaken. Again, I that just, it doesn't sit right with me. And as far as I analyze self as much as I can, as honestly as I can, I don't even feel like this is coming from an ego-based thing. I mean, maybe it's perceived as that, but like in my heart, when I feel in my heart, it's like just something, it doesn't connect. Compromise to weaken, less than desirable, it's really a setup for future resentment. And you know what resentment's like. Most of us, if you're an adult, you, you know what resentment's like. And it doesn't have to be romantic. It can be with parents. It can be with siblings. It can be with bosses, coworkers, anybody. You can even resent yourself, you know, making too many sacrifices. And so where is the balance? Where is the balance? And why do, okay, let me also briefly mention, I follow the Trap Witch on Instagram. I have followed her for years. She truly inspired me to be more authentic to myself and like not feel so weird or cringy or afraid to embody what I really felt. And so props to her, but she kind of touches on this topic too. And I really, it's not a men versus women thing. I have sons. I want my sons to be empowered. And, you know, so I'm not going to be out here man hating. But, you know, let's face it, there are uh, majority. Mm, okay, how am I going to say this? There's just a lot of men and women that are so freaking lost and so just desperate for love and that breaks my heart because logically I know that even if they had the person the SP they manifested this person it does not matter if you do not love yourself okay and also a lot of us, and I'm guilty of this in the past, and it's something that I've been fortunate enough to realize and, you know, work through, is making other people responsible for your happiness. That's so unfair. It's so, it's just a setup to fail. It's so unfair. And it's something I still, I, I don't want to say I struggle with it, but it's something I still catch myself. I'm like, well, I'm going to have to find a way. <laughs> I'm going to have to find a way to deal with this because it just, logically, it doesn't align with how this universe works. I hope that made sense. I'm I'm trying to move forward, okay? So we've talked about about compromise, sacrifice, okay, love, lust, sacrificial love is sort of the story that Christians per perpetuate, how many times am I going to say that word? <laughs> it's the story that Christians tell about Jesus. In, And, you know, Jesus, I believe is, if you just look at Jesus and the archetype of him, is really fucking incredible. Okay, I believe he was like the alchemist. Like I'm an alchemist, but he was like the OG alchemist. Like turn water to wine, period. <laughs> like is Jesus, it just, I don't know. But when it comes to that sacrificial love, it's like, was that really the moral of the story or was it love yourself and others 
Like I, I'm not, I'm not, and I guess that's why I'm leaving this to be an open conversation because there's just certain things that I want to understand like what people are thinking. Of course, I'm gonna have my own opinions, my own beliefs, but the truth of the matter is I will admit my beliefs change often. I like to grow, I like to expand, I like to, you know, analyze my own beliefs and question them. <laughs> I do, I, I like that, I like that quality about myself. Um, and I just don't see how sacrificial love is truly love. Now, let me disclaim also, another disclaimer. Now, if someone you love is ill or, you know, terminal, God forbid, God forbid, I understand sacrificing, but, you know, most of us are not. And also that's low key like a, a not necessarily a long term situation even if it's like a year or two or three it's in the long scheme of things and so i'm not insensitive to those situations i understand and i would do anything for the people i love but i guess in my experience and i know a lot of your experience also there have been times where I'm just like, I did all of that for someone who wouldn't even like piss on me to put out a fucking fire if it came down to it. And so there really is a need to make personal <sighs> boundaries, yes. But I'm just, you know, sacrificial love just doesn't seem like the epitome of what love is because you know love is meant to empower us love is meant to bring joy and i don't think there's any lack in love i think when it comes to love there should be no feelings of lack again if you are in lust with someone you're gonna feel resentful for giving up this and giving up that because your heart wasn't in the right place to begin with. When you're in love, it's not even a question. It's not, it's not a sacrifice because you're not resentful. So I think we could go on, but I just want to leave it at that. Those are my current thoughts. You're watching my thoughts in progress. I would love to hear what you think. I would love to just like hear something inspiring, something like you felt about the way I, something I shared. Um, you know, again, we could talk about this for hours. I'm a Cancer Rising. I love romantic shit. <laughs> okay, and I got something really cool coming for you in the future. It's in the baby stages, and I'm not going to tell nobody until it's done and ready. Like, okay, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to say too much. I love you as you are. And I just think that, you know, our definition of what love is what it should be, what it looks like, what it feels like is so unique. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from you, okay? Love you. Happy Venus Retrograde. I wish you the best of blessings. And until next time.